Yeah. Is no, this no. is Daily Monday full auto something, something, something? No, it's or... just his Daily Monday. But this is oh. the last time it's just going to be called his Daily Wait, Monday. Are you changing the format? I'm not changing. Well, I don't Th- know. This would we be might. a huge surprise because you've never done that before. <laughs> well, I'm. Uh, this is the last show before I do my, my yearly. Actually, I do biannual sabbaticals. I do Christmas and I do Easter. Christmas, actually, I usually do like 10 days. And then Easter, I do just one week. So these are the times that I take to reflect. What am I doing? How can I improve things? And I recalibrate. I, I fast, aren't you, I pray, I do stuff. Aren't you following the real Christian calendar this year? I'm not going to say it's the real Christian calendar. I'm just going to say I think it's probably closer to historical traditions so i'm the real gonna calendar. follow the what i think is closer to historical tradition so i'm following the eastern orthodox calendar i'm not eastern orthodox but i am gonna yeah. follow that calendar yeah <laughs> that's awesome it's that's a good well the good more time. you look into it the more you look into it the you know the easier it becomes to find the original church and not that other stuff. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to <laughs> Change My Faith. <laughs> Yay. So we got a, I, we got a good show being, lined up for you guys. Are Go you ahead. being trick are you being triggered? Not really. No. Okay. I just probably I'm thinking our audience that I have built on the premise that we're gonna talk about guns is probably not interested in talking about our uh our ongoing debate, I'll say. Between Protestantism, I guess, and Eastern Orthodoxism. So <laughs> I kind of switch it back to guns. How about that? We can do that. We're gonna do that. We we have a we have a top story where we get we kind of well, the title of the show is Killing the Two A with Lawfare. And I wanna make it clear the top story that will lead us into that. It's about Remington going bankrupt. Now, and I know that I titled, yes, I did a little clickbaity stuff. The title of the article that I wrote is, Is Remington's Bankruptcy Tied to Sandy Hook Lawsuits? Not really. It's not really. But still, it's going to lead us down that road because it is facing a Sandy Hook lawsuit. So we're going to start off, I guess we're going to talk about the real reason that Remington is going bankrupt. And then we're going to go into, well, yeah. Then we're going to go into the other stuff. And then after that, hopefully, because I think the full auto section may fill a lot of this show. I don't know if we'll get to iWorld or we'll get to iPrepper. I do have stuff lined up for that. But I'd like to speak after that about, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you. I'm going to save it. And I sent you the show notes, so this shouldn't be any surprise to you. You should be able to look and see all the stuff that's there. I'm sure you, as a as a as a diligent, responsible, uh, professional co-host on a professional podcast live stream show, I'm sure you took the time before the show to look over the show notes, read the articles, and what was that? The show notes. Yeah, I sent you. I sent you the show notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you, were you showing them? Were you flashing? Were you showing yes, flashing? I was flashing my notes. The, uh, so you, you took copious notes. So I could just kick back and you can run this show? Well, if that's usually the case. But today I'm going to let you do your thing. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So our first story is Remington. And Remington is the oldest uh, American gun manufacturer it's not the oldest gun manufacturer, but it is the oldest American. Is it Beretta? Is Beretta now the oldest? Is that uh, Beretta's been the oldest for a very long time? It, they've been it, like over four hundred yeah. years. Is it? Is it? You know, how old is Beretta? You know what? I'm going to check that. I know it's, it's totally off topic, but uh, I'm dude, curious. it's over four hundred years. Beretta age. Nope. Beretta established. Family. Okay, yeah. 1526. Holy moly. It's almost five. Holy 
It is only eight years away from its 500th anniversary. Beretta is like and almost, it's, well, it's twice, over twice as old as the United it, States. And it's still run by the same family. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's, that's lineage. Creepy. I guess it's cool, but then it's it's kind of creepy, too. It's uh, You managed to hold things together for 500 years. That's that's quite impressive. But anyway, we'll get back to to the Remington story here. So... Uh, they're, they're, they're filing for bankruptcy. And I say in her, but this story might be more than a story of bankruptcy for a poorly run gun manufacturing company. And no, no, I don't believe that the other part of the story that we'll get to is why they went bankrupt. It, it might, well, you know what? I'm going to save that. Let's talk. What, how, why do you think Beretta, Art Beretta, <laughs> why do you think Remington has, uh, has hit the the reset button because their quality has been slumping and their product line has not matured nor has it evolved in the last uh 40 years i mean they've done very little to innovate um the innovators um who established the company uh, and who uh, gave it its foundation are long gone. Um, and technocrats have, have took it over. And these bean counters made some choices about, you know, how they're going yeah. to. Why don't you yes. tell me the story of the, of the, well, before you do, I just want to. Well, I'm getting this. to that. Well, I want to add this. We have a couple of comments here that I want to address. Alex says, hello. Hi, Alex. But Sean Joseph, and I think you're going to appreciate why I had to pause for this comment. Sean Joseph is dead to me, by the way. Sean Joseph said, high point is the oldest. So just, you know. All right. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. That had to be addressed. That was, eh, yes. it hurts. Um, so uh, about 15, 20 years ago, uh, people were saying that their guns, their Remington 700s were going off uh, and they weren't pulling the triggers when they were going off. So it was an accidental uh, fire and they couldn't explain why the gun uh, decided to shoot the bullet when there was no finger on the trigger and people started dying and getting hurt and bad things happened. And Remington pretty much denied that there was an issue with their trigger. Now, I know I have close family whose Remington 700 discharged without pulling the trigger. They hit the bolt and the thing went off in a tree stand and they s sat there in complete shock. Now, this person you're talking about, because you've already told me this, is story. a very seasoned hunter. Not only Was that. It, but a Remington 700 fan. Oh, right? big, big time, big time. Big advocate. So, and what he had done is he had taken his Remington apart and put it back together and used the factory uh, pressures for the screws. But uh, something went horribly wrong after he disassembled the gun, cleaned it, and reassembled it. And uh, he then went in and doubled the torque force and the problem went away but i don't think most people knew to do that they weren't such um savvy gun folk and people really got hurt well like well like sean joseph said here they wouldn't pay to fix correct with a he's saying a 25 cent piece however much it is it's correct correct very cheap it was nominal so um now remington like a year or so ago started fixing their triggers for free. Well, thanks for nothing. I mean, it's been so long and so many of these firearms have been sold and so many potential accidents can happen. I mean, no one trusts the company anymore or few people do. So the marketplace spoke and Remington is paying the price for its stubborn denial of an issue where the inventor of the trigger system 
disavowed it. He said, hey, we shouldn't be using this. There, there is a fatal flaw to this trigger system. It's too sensitive. And so they, I believe they made him retire early, if I remember correctly. I'm going on memory here. They made him retire prematurely and told him to shut the hell up. On that note, I have to run and plug my computer in. Uh, very bad Don't timing. Plug your computer in. Meanwhile, I'll repeat what you, Alex said here. Yes. I, I think it's a freedom group that brought. Uh, it's freedom group, right? I remember that. I had forgotten about that. That bought out Remington. That's the problem. Alex says he buys many gums. That gums. Do you buy gums? If you do buy gums, let me know. Uh, he buys many guns that. Freedom Group owns, but Remington had a chance to make a huge impact with the ACR. What do you mean by ACR? Instead of caring about private sales, they wanted to sell themselves out to the government contracts. It turns out they didn't get those government contracts, right, right Alex? Uh, Bushmaster, another Freedom Group-owned company, got the rights to the ACR after Remington's failure. Yeah, so, I mean, the bottom line, what we're, what we're outlining here... Is that uh, that that Remington's failure? It, it, it first off, it's not indicative of oh advanced combat rifles, right? Uh, it's not indicative of of a of a failing or dying gun market, not at all. So, so you little gun grabber fanatic, police street wet dreamer, police state wet dreamers, yeah, that yeah, that's 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 not what's going on here, Remington is just a poorly I'm gonna say piss poorly managed company and that's and that's why it has to go to bankruptcy. Now they did say they don't intend on on stopping gun manufacturing. They just they're going through chapter eleven bankruptcy to try to restructure their debt. So we got that part out of the way. So we're so so I want to make it clear that we're establishing that I'm not going down some conspiracy theorist trail with the next part of this story. But I do believe the next part of this story is is definitely worth talking about. And and I'll say for for those of us that that don't believe uh, that uh, that words on paper finitely hold people in place, there's there's reason. I, I'd say it's not a strong reason, but it's a realistic reason to believe it's possible that the lawsuits that Remington uh, that that Remington's now facing that these lawsuits could potentially I'm just going to be hyperbolic here, and I don't think I'm being that hyperbolic could potentially gut the whole gun manufacturing industry. And when I say gun manufacturing industry, I mean the legal above board gun manufacturing industry. You know where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, that might not be such a bad thing. Really? Okay, before I even get to it, explain that. That's a provocative well, statement. Well, listen, if they're going to make purchasing a pre-manufactured firearm illegal, uh, then you're going to leave me no choice but for me to make my own firearms. And there's so many so many ways of doing it these days that it's not illegal for an individual to make his own firearm. So they're going to drive an entire industry underground with zero serialization, uh, complete anarchy. Uh, that might actually anarchy? not be such a bad, well, you know what I mean? No, uh, I don't. in terms of the industry, I'm thinking you don't know the meaning of that word anarchy <laughs> for, for the, Big state loving, organization loving individuals. They just think anarchy means chaos. Yeah, but it would be chaos for them because they wouldn't be able to track any of these. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to track <laughs> um, individuals making their own firearms. And the techniques and the technology are there where somebody can easily make their own gun now. Yeah, you can get a ghost gunner uh, machine from uh, Cody Wilson uh, from his Defense Distributed, and you can, I think he has them for 1911s, and I don't know what all, he has He has a couple different ones now. 
not just for 1911s, it, but it's basically a machine you can get unfinished uh, lowers, and that machine will enable you to finish the lowers. But be that as it may, that's 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 always like. You know, the law of unintended consequences, it kind of goes both ways. Sometimes a bad thing actually produces good things. So, yeah, I think you have a good point there. I'm going I'm to well, go and – go ahead. Well, it, and it, it, would, it would make it far more profitable for individuals who came up with gun – firearm designs to sell the plans and the CNC techniques, uh, which are automated at this point – what you would have to do is buy yourself a CNC machine, correct? Uh, a right. small one, and invest learn in how that. To use it. Right. Well, you you wouldn't have to learn very much because you would download the program to cut the metal uh, to the desired sizes and shapes and designs. And lo and behold, after a couple of days of grinding at billet steel, you would have a firearm. And then you would go get an, more billets of steel and make different kinds of firearms for yourself. Um, this, this would drive an entire industry of individuals making their own stuff. And I think that's actually potentially good because the markup on a firearm, you know, what's it take? Like 100, 200 bucks at the most to, to manufacture something? And they're being so yeah, they're and they're being sold for a thousand dollars. Well, there's, if Remington, I, I if Remington can't get a piece of that, that market they, share, they, there's a lot of reasons they, you know, they got to pay their, they got to pay people. It's more than just the making of the gun. But but yeah, sure. I see your point. Sure, yeah, but you you'd be cutting out for a lot. You'd cheaper. be cutting out all the middlemen, and you would once you pay for the initial investment of milling machines. Um, all you'd have to do is go get some steel and grind it up, and there get you have steel it. Steel and some plants. Steel yeah. and plants, baby. Steel and plants. And you'd be buying the steel from... There's polymers as well. You know, and you could 3D use printing uh, 3D stuff. printing for handles and for lowers and for lots of other things. So a new industry would be would arise from the death of an old, antiquated industry. Yeah. Now, I don't necessarily believe it's going to happen, but I'm going to cover this anyway. So this is the Sandy Hook families. I'm going to cover There's two stories here. The first is from November, and the second one is from, I think, February. November of last year, and then the other one's February this year. Sandy Hook family's suit against Gunmaker goes to Supreme Court on November 14th. Well, uh, so the families of 10 victims filed... Uh, the lawsuit January 2015, seeking to hold Remington liable for the Sandy Hook shooting. Uh, this, the, the, the shooter, I'm not going to repeat his name, shot his way into, I'm not going to even repeat the details, but he used a Bushmaster AR-15. And the lawsuit also named Camfer Holding LLP, the gun's distributor, and Riverview Gun Sales, the East Windsor gun store, where the, the shooter bought the gun or the shooter's mother bought the gun. But the lawsuit was dismissed uh, in a written ruling. Bellis agreed with attorneys for Remington that the lawsuit falls squarely within the broad immunity provided to gun manufacturers and dealers by federal law. But then she decided to reverse it, and she's throwing it up to the court, the, the which Supreme Court is this, the, the Connecticut Supreme Court? Uh, so is now it, the families... The, That's the, the communist the Supreme Court? Yeah, pretty much. The families hit another roadblock blow block when the judge dismissed the suit in the fall of 2016, but the plaintiffs kicked the case up to the Connecticut Supreme Court on appeal, where a panel of judges are still waiting to decide if a creative, a creative, like I said, creative. No, no, no. If, if they manage to find some plausible deniability in the language that gets them to do what they wanted to do the whole time. And they have to have a level of plausible deniability that won't cause people to lose their crap if they decide to use that plausible deniability, the ghost in the language, as it were. Uh, and now they're, they're still waiting, and there's no word yet, uh, to decide if a creative legal argument might get the claim around the protection of law, 
Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. Now, now, just I just do want to take this in though, that it took an, a law, the Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, to protect gun manufacturers from being sued if people use their guns to hurt people. I mean, I think everybody pretty much understands if if you do that, you're pretty much putting gun manufacturers and gun dealers and everyone, you're putting them all out of business. But like, but it's not like, just gun manufacturers that you'd be putting out of business. I said you, gun dealers. No, you'd be you'd be looking at Home Depot as well. I mean, what if someone's murdered with a hammer? Far more people are murdered with hammers right. than with semi-auto yeah. rifles. Because if I it. could sue, if I could sue a gun manufacturer, I could sue a hammer maker. I could sue a knife maker. I could sue a pencil maker. Anybody that uses any 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 tool that can be used for deadly force. Well, what about an a automotive? Spoon. What about a, an automobile? Right. What about an airplane? Hey, Boeing made an airplane that could be flown into a building. It should have had a system that wouldn't allow it, some computer system in it that wouldn't allow it to fly into a building. Boeing is liable for those planes that flew into buildings. I mean, where do you stop with this? That's the problem with the argument that they're making. It's not going to get much traction. It, so it can't. you're actually making a very good point as to you know I, i'm i'm looking at this and i'm leaning towards this really isn't going to go to that place but it, it, it still it, it still possibly could but you're bringing up some really good points that even if they would really love to do it because yeah they would love to be able to lawfare the second amendment out of existence and before some of my more i'll say anarchist libertarian minarchist type friends get get all triggered uh, I'm just talking about the Second Amendment as uh, it's 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 an ideational tool that uh, kind of keeps people in check. <laughs> it does to a certain degree. It, it has some degree of real power, but we understand that none of us get our right from the Second Amendment. But be that as it may, if they could lawfare the Second Amendment out of existence, they would certainly love to do that. But the cost it might just be too dang high. So with that, well, because then, Go ahead. because then they open the door to the first amendment right. and the third and go on down the line. Then oh, what's yeah. the point of having any laws at all? That's good. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, I don't see your problem. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> This is a good thing. We should be rooting for this to happen, everybody. Anybody? Well, again, the law of unintended consequences. If this passes and you start to dissolve the nation, in term, not the nation, but the, the presumption of law being moral. Um, you mean the myth of the that, rule of law no longer having a sway over the land? Because that, that myth. I'm not going to say the rule of law is a total myth. It's it's an ideational tool. It does have real power. But at the end of the day, the only real power it has is the power that other people give it. It's it has no objective power outside of the power that the uh, the ideas that people have in their head about it. But if those ideas die and they fancy that that they don't have this 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 safety net which really doesn't exist, but they imagine it does called rule of law. Man, it's come, you, you're going to have a bad time. You, you're going to have a bad time. That's, well, I think that's where you're going. Yeah, and, and just to add more fuel to this fire. So um, I know someone who committed suicide by taking sleeping pills. Hey, that manufacturer, they're liable now. They, they, they should have only allowed that person to have one sleeping pill a day. Why did they give them 60? What's what's up with that? I mean, this if this were to pass, um, it, it it would set a precedent that would would be uh, it would be reversed within a couple of years. It would have to be reversed because people would take that precedent and they would sue for everything, everything that went bad in their lives. My tire blew out. You know, it should have been designed better. It, it, you know, I went over a sharp stone. A tire should be able to handle a sharp stone. Bridgestone, you're you're responsible, man. Um, I mean, I fell down the stairs. Who designed these stupid stairs? An architect? Well, who, I mean, <laughs> dude, 
It, it, they shouldn't have been yeah. eight inches yeah. high. They the should have been three inches might high. Be a bit of a reach, a reach. Dude, but... it's not because because people have sued for falling off ladders they set up in the mud because the and one because. <laughs> Because they have a warning label say, on there. <laughs> we shouldn't say, set it up in the mud. Well, you didn't say I shouldn't so set this up on muddy soil. So, so it, 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 it opens it the, the floodgates flood of litigation in a way, way that it, it would not, not be manageable. Be manageable. So, it, dude, it, there's no way they're going to pass this. Absolutely no way. Okay. Lost Thank you there you. for a second. Sorry, folks. We had a little bit of an audio issue. I fixed it. Anyway, I I missed the last three seconds of what you said because I had to I had to click on a button and reset. I said very simply that this will open up uh, the a floodgates of litigation that will be unmanageable, and people will realize real quick the mistake that's taken place. And if this were to pass, it would be stricken down and reversed within a couple of years. Or less. It's. I mean, I I could see possibly Connecticut Supreme Court actually doing it. I I think that uh, you know, of course, it's not going to be settled by the Connecticut Supreme freaking court. It's going to immediately go to the federal courts. I no doubt about that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I do want to point out. Sean said. Sean uh, said that uh, voting should be outlawed because of the Eighth Amendment. Uh, and his reasoning, I, I think his reason is pretty decent. Having to vote between Donald Donald Clinton and Hillary Trump is cruel and unusual punishment. But um, bum. <laughs> hey, it's a funny joke. If you're here and you're a Trump supporter, no offense. I think it's a funny joke. Although I, I didn't vote for anyone, full disclosure, the last election. Uh, but yeah, they ate the the Eighth Amendment. I think the Eighth Amendment is violated on an almost daily basis on numerous fronts. I think I think we're subject all of us to cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, I won't say constantly, but but often. So the Eighth Amendment is fun, but it's it's one you never talk about. <laughs> Nobody cares about it. It's like nobody cares about being tortured or something. It's kind of until until you're weird. some dude being tortured. And well, it depends on who's being tortured. I mean, if they're from a certain group, probably not going to say anything about it. But if it's from a certain, if there are preferred groups that are being tortured, that's when we talk about it. I'll leave it at that. Are you ready to move on? I got something to say. Are you ready? Let's see what you think to the, think of this. So, so this is just a little pondering on uh, it's just something I thought about, and it and and the title of this is uh, "Anti Gun Culture Is to Blame for Gun Violence." You like that title? No. Anti-gun culture is to don't don't say anything yet. Just reserve reserve your. Okay. Yeah. So so on one hand, we I'll put that in quotes have created a culture of gun fear, meaning most people are not brought up becoming familiar with guns, how to use them, responsible, their limitations, basic gun ethics. Uh, they're 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 basically not brought up to respect the gun. Fear the gun, yes, but not respect. On the other hand, these same people can go out and buy guns when they get old enough, but they lack the basic understanding, discipline, and respect of the gun to actually be responsible gun owners. So, you know, it, it, it's their children and they're growing up. We keep them away from guns. We... We shriek at the sight of guns as they get older, you know, like, you, you know, I don't know, man, guns are cool. I don't know how many times that I've spoken to people, and I actually said this. I said this to you. I I was afraid to get guns because I was afraid. Would, would I, would I, would I, would I hurt, hurt, hurt someone? Like, uh, you know, suddenly, you know, like suddenly you, what, you think just because you don't think to yourself, well, you have knives in your house and you haven't hurt anyone. And a gun, it's easy to hurt somebody with a knife. It's easy to hurt someone with a gun. And, but still, 
because I grew up in a culture that I grew up in that gun fear culture. You didn't, but you're the exception, uh, Professor Rambo. So, so still, folks, they they grow up in this gun fear, and then they get to an age where, yeah, man, guns, because you know, guns are. You know, they come to that conclusion, guns are cool, so they go out and they buy guns. But the fix, the fix is 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 not to take away the guns. The fix is to destroy the anti gun culture and see a next generation of well trained gun owners who don't look at guns as on what on the other you know, they look at them as Superman making tools. They feel invincible. They feel like you know they can get out of any situation, and they treat them as the deadly, and they and then and then maybe then they'll actually treat them as the deadly tools that they all that they are. So even with all that said, the actual gun violence—I'll put that in quotes—that occurs in this country, first off, it's incredibly over exaggerated. While the benefits of gun ownership, the lives that guns have saved, are grossly un- underreported. So I'm not. I don't want you to get the impression that I'm filling out the narrative that there's some sort of gun violence problem. But it is frustrating to see the heroic claims made by gun advocates that imagine that a good guy with a gun can stop a bad guy with a gun. I mean, that can happen, but many times he can't. And sometimes he might actually do more harm than good. Like, I know for me, for instance, and and I say this with the caveat being, you don't fully know what you'll do until you're in that situation. So I'll put that caveat out there. Uh, but the reasons that I might pull a gun are are slim to damn near none. Uh, I mean, even if I'm being held up, unless someone is going to take something from me that is critical to my life, or unless they're trying to take my gun, assuming they know I have one because I'm not an open carrier, uh, I'm not pulling a gun to potentially kill someone for robbing me. And at the end of the day, gun ownership without gun responsibility and a healthy dose of respect for human life is dangerous. But it's still not nearly as dangerous as having a state own all the guns. So there's no gun, there's no gun violence epidemic. But, but can we reduce the amount of gun violence there is? Absolutely, but not by getting rid of guns, by embracing may, guns and respecting may, them. May I interject? Yes, I'm done. Go ahead. Okay. So then I'll follow up. Um, I think you're partially correct, Thank but you. feel good. But the that. the majority of mass murders, and I would say a large part of regular criminal activity with firearms has more to do with broken families and poor parenting than which leads into proper respect of the firearm. Um, as a kid, I was bullied and I had fantasies about being a giant and stepping on the bullies that were bullying me. And even though we had firearms in the house, I would never consider taking a firearm to school, not because of what society would say. I could give two rats asses. If I got revenge on those kids, that, that would be enough. But I was afraid of losing the love and respect of my father and mother. So don't cry. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, No, I was, I thought it was going to burp and I was, I was trying to hide. I know you can, you you can you can man up. You're about to tear up. I know, <laughs> no, but no. but the reality is, my dad taught me to shoot. I shot my first twelve gauge shotgun at the age of like four. Obviously, my dad was holding it, but I realized at a very early age what a firearm could do, and I would never consider pointing at a human being. Why? Because my dad would drill this through my head and my brother said, a gun has no respect and no master. It will do whatever the person who's holding it, even though it might be your gun, if someone else is holding it, it will do their bidding. It has no respect for you and it has no master. 
You never point it at someone else and you never lose it to someone else. And I was like, and every day that we ever in, were to go hunting, that would be the first thing that he would say to me. A gun has no master and has no respect. Uh, and I would not want to lose that connection with my father. So that's, it, it would be unthinkable to consider running into a school and shooting it up. These kids that are running into schools and shooting them up, most of them are from broken families. They don't have strong parental guidance in their lives. And they don't have respect for anything or anyone. This is a huge problem. So to teach these kids respect for firearms, it has to start with re-engaging the family and reconnecting the family and not making divorce so easy and forcing people. Yes, I said it, forcing people to stay together, to raise their kids until their kids are adults. You made kids? Too bad for you. You don't like being together? I don't give a rats. You're going to stay together and raise those kids. You, you, you lost me on that one. You, you are yeah, I know you did. You lost me on that one. Yeah. I, I don't believe in divorce. I don't. Unless someone's being horribly it, abused. It exists. You, you don't have to believe in it. It exists. It yeah. happens. And sometimes when people stay together, they actually could end up doing more harm. It could get really ugly, really dark, really vicious. Yeah, I, I've heard that. And I understand it, but you work through it and you, and you find ways. And if you have, um, any intellect and any understanding of your life, you will find mechanisms to deal with those problems. It's, there so there, what there are now is we're going past the guns. Yeah. And we're solving all of society's problems right well, now. Ladies and gentlemen, post yeah, well, up. You got a fire going. Let me tell you something. A little bit more. Roast the marshmallows. Settle down. As, look at as Professor cultures. Rambo. Look at cultures Rambo. where the family unit is not encouraged to just divvy up and go their own separate ways. Look at traditional cultures around the world, and look at the level of violence in that culture, and it is infinitesimal compared to what we have here. And, and what in you're Western really cultures, talking about there is. You're talking about communities that have little accountability. When you have little accountability, when you don't know each other, when everyone else is the other, well, then it's a lot easier to, to lash out at one another, especially when you think you can get away with it because the whole community isn't going to hold you accountable. So things build up. So Well, but also you, you value your place in that community. So you wouldn't want to do things that oh, would yeah. dim diminish your place in the community. You, you want to do things that where the community sees you as a valuable uh, asset within that community. And so the, those people's behavior is radically different from the behavior of cultures where, you know, 50 percent of the families are divorced. Yes, and I. I, I, by the way, I don't. I'm not suggesting that you know all you have to do is embrace gun culture, and it solves all the other problems. I am saying though that embracing gun culture will reduce gun violence far more effectively than trying to ban guns. So that's 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 the crux of my point. But there are a lot of issues as to why there is even the degree of gun violence there is. The even though school shootings. Mass shootings, they're really rare events it, within the scope of the United States of America, 350 million people. They're, they're, they're really rare events. It's, you, you don't have much fear that you're going to be the victim of a mass shooting. But the, the reasons that they exist at all, uh, very little of it has to do with the actual, you know, the presence of guns or the ease with which people have have access to guns i mean you're you're creating or or you're, you're you're seeing a culture that is isolating and demonizing and invalidating more and more people and putting them into positions where they don't feel like they have a place <laughs> so what do you think is going to happen if you get as you get more and more people that feel like they don't have a place for whatever reason I mean, like even this kid, I don't know if you saw, you know, this Florida kid, 
This kid was bullied all the time. And and how do schools handle bullying? They give you these unrealistic things to do. Go talk to a teacher and you know, if 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 a bully hits you and you hit the bully back, guess what? You know you're getting suspended too. It's no 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 tolerance for violence. Well, your no tolerance for violence is actually helping the violence stew up and get worse and worse. So when somebody lashes out, they lash out in a very, very horrible way. And so, you know, a part of that is, you know, definitely the the less family ties you have, the the more removed you are from a connection to community, from people. Uh, well, the more likely you just, are to lash out. It, well, I mean, if my kids are being bullied, and there was a there was a time when one of my kids was being bullied by an older kid who just didn't like my kid, and my kid was always stressed out about going to sit on the bus, and finally I kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and lo and behold, well, someone was bullying my kid, and I started making observations. I contacted the school. I contacted the kids' parents because they were neighbors of mine. And guess what? That problem ended post-haste because the parents... Um, Probably embarrassed. Yeah, that's part of it, for sure, was, was embarrassed. But they also had to deal with me in my neighborhood in a very direct way. And they had to deal with me in the school in a very direct way. And they had to deal with me in the greater community in a very direct way. So by the parents getting involved in a very direct way, that situation stopped. And the anxiety my kid was facing, the anger that my kid was facing, all that was resolved. So if you don't, if you come from a broken family, you have 50% more chance that something is not going to happen. Well, the I was situation just won't say, be resolved. In your case, you went to a kid who had parents. If if the kid that was bullying your kid was either they were parents who were checked out or more, you know, if, if it was a single parent who really didn't give a crap, that, that, that wouldn't have helped you at all. It would have done not a bit of good for you to approach that parent. Wouldn't have, well, wouldn't have helped but, at all. But it wasn't just approaching the parents. It was approaching the school. It was pro approaching the administration. It was, it was a multi-leveled engagement. And, and we were lucky because there are plenty of parents who have approached the school and the administration and gotten okay. no help. Now, in my case, my my daughter actually experienced bullying. And uh, basically, I gave her – I mean, this was – she got to the first step, which was I coached her on how to confront a bully. Not I, – I didn't I, – I mean, I did let her know to, you know, don't feel afraid to defend yourself. I don't care. If you ever have to defend yourself and the school suspends you, I'll back you up. But I I gave her some coaching for how to confront the bully and basically she she laughed at the bully. And it worked. <clears throat> In that case it worked. It didn't have to go up any higher. It it stopped at that point. When she started laughing at the bully and she had a couple of friends, I guess, that had been silent before or saw her kind of laughing at the bully and then they kind of started laughing at the bully too. And that was it. Well, again, so your daughter had her father uh, giving her advice and, and giving her the backing emotional. Right. Uh, yeah. She right. had that backing. So she knew she wasn't alone. Even if the school turned on her, her dad was going to back her. So some kid who's isolated completely and has no, outlet no parents to talk to no one to confide in you know either of our situations could have ended differently for sure with could your kid or worse. my kid yes right. but but the reality is and some of them do for sure but you're statistically speaking kids from complete families tend to fare much better in situations like this because they do have the guidance and the coaching of their parents. They do know that someone's looking out for them. They do know that someone's going to go talk on their behalf at the school who's going to be respected because some 12-year-old kid talking to a 50-year-old man isn't going to get the same respect as a 50-year-old man going to a 50-year-old man and saying, hey, you better do something about this or I will. That changes the dynamics real quick. So 
gun violence for me, to a large part, is an extension of the ills of our society. And a lot of those stem from the broken family. And a lot of these mass shootings come from people who are from broken families. And that's that's all I have to say to it about it. Yeah, now Alex Pesterfield says uh, embracing liberty and property rights will end gun violence. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know that people are ready to embrace liberty and property rights. I don't think that people are primarily ideationally driven. I think, I think having, I mean, Dimitri's going to argue. I'm kind of with him, but I don't necessarily believe it's the only way to create community and connectivity. You know, the traditional husband, wife, children, family. I, I'll just say that however it's done, and I think that's a really good, effective way, but however it's done, if you don't have a community in which people are connected to each other, accountable to each other, then, then yeah, you're you're going to have increased uh, acts of quote-unquote violence. And, uh, and Alex also said uh, that there's no such thing as gun violence, only violence. You're right. Yes, absolutely. It's just violence. It's not gun violence. It's violence. I mean, you want to be say, well, a gun was used in it. No, it's just violence. It's you don't you don't say you don't say rock violence or fist violence, knife violence. Knife violence. Although now in England, now they are saying knife violence, and why is that? Because now they're targeting knives. They got rid of the guns. They sufficient. You look at what's going on in in Britain right now, and some of the the laws that they get away with over there. They would never get away with the laws that they have passed if if the Brits had guns. Like with Count Dankula, he he's facing a potential prison sentence because he made a trolley video in which he had his dog do a Heil Hitler thing. He's actually facing prison time. I could I I seriously doubt that if Britain was an armed culture that 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 would be happening. You're smirking. Why are you smirking at me? They voted the socialists in. They voted for it. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. They, you got what you wanted. Retards, man. Now, now as England slips into second world status because it sure as hell isn't a first world uh country anymore they 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 can't even keep their ships their military yeah, ships going yeah you they're, know I'm an anglophile this is yeah, really they're slipping they're slipping into second world status um quickly and yeah. as they as they slip into third world status they'll start to figure out what Greece figured out oh the socialism stuff um, yeah, it doesn't really work. Um, right. And the reason why the the Eastern Europeans have abandoned it and Poland is militant about not doing anything socialistic, which is what the Germans and the Western Europeans want them to do, it's because they've lived under it. They know what socialism and Marxism and communism and Maoism and all those stupid isms accomplish. They are murderous. And they only destroy. They you don't like build. Them? No. I, I, no. <laughs> I'm just going to say, you seem a little judgy, judgy. You seem a little judgy, judgy. The first uh, time I went back to visit Greece, I met some family members there who were pretty strong Marxists. And they gave me some literature um, to read. And I read it. And, um, I was like, wow, this is this makes a lot of sense. I get I get where they're coming from. I understand why people should be Marxist, socialist, because they really care about everyone. And as a as a good person, I should I should care about everyone too. And you know, w what's the harm in giving up your stuff? You know, your stuff is just stuff. You're not dealing with lives. And then you realize as you start to grow up that all of that goes contrary to human nature. Yeah, I, I see a lot from, I'm going to call them the steady left. I have more 
in common with the non stady left. I'm not a stady. I'm not a non stady leftist. I'm not a non stady rightist either. But but I can relate to the non stady left way more than I can the stady left. But they've identified a lot of legitimate problems. It's just that they want to replace one control with another control. And they imagine somehow that they can put into the hands of the few a certain level of power that will somehow make them not oppress people the way the current system is already oppressing people. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't wash with me. They, they, have a, they have a certain faith that the people that will rise to the top will be kind, magnanimous, caring, selfless, when in fact every single time the people that rise to the top in in the states are exactly the opposite of that well, who the heck every who the heck wants to dedicate single, single time who the, heck, who the heck wants to dedicate a significant part of their lives to ruling over others <laughs> I mean, it's it's not the person that just wants to live their lives and be left alone. It's not the person that just, you know, wants to give of themselves and help others. It's it's the person who enjoys bossing people around, enjoys Correct. the power that they get from that. So oh. any type of system that puts one individual in a special power category separate from the individual over here is going to draw... Like Sean Joseph said, freaking sociopaths. <laughs> it's always going to happen, dude. I don't care whether right. it's a communist system or an American Republican system. You're always going to attract sociopaths to positions of power. And the more power that position has, the really the easier it will be for the, the sociopath of the sociopaths. The socio of the socio... I don't know. The, the frothiest sociopaths to rise to the top. So it's never so, going to work, kids. So socialism, Marxism, horrible ideas. Community involvement at the local level, great idea. Getting involved with your kids' lives and keeping your family together, even though it, cause you great, it may cause you horrible consternation on a daily basis, you brought those kids into the world, you have a responsibility to raise them the best that you can and to be around for them because those kinds of kids don't go shooting up schools. The other kinds of kids, well, it's been proven time and time again. Most of them come from broken families. There's something about the broken family that creates these situations. And I'm not going to get into it any deeper than that. Yeah, that, that'd be another show. Not even this yeah. show. Correct. <laughs> Different. So what's the next we'll subject? Do a special I show sometime. Talk about that. I think we've that. beaten this horse. Yeah. I got I got one more story that I want to get to here before we close this show out. Yeah. And uh this is it's another gun story. No way. Yeah. Kind of like a sneak peek by the way cuz uh I think yeah, that when we come back no. this is going to Wait. be a gun show again, just a gun Wait. show. Wait, are you changing the format again? Oh my god. We're not gonna do it. We're not doing full auto I oh my roll gosh. and I prepper. Dude, Although you've never will, done that. This is such stuff. This is such, such a, a surprise. How long have you and I been doing shows together? Like six weeks? Or has it been like two lifetimes? Three years, something like that. No. We started off doing State of Wake, remember? Oh right. What was that? A State of Wake. <laughs> it was called State of Wake. And then it was called what? Full auto. Did we just jump from state of wake to full auto? We went from state of wake to full auto, and full auto took a lot, a lot of different weird changes. And then, well, finally we became Miss Daily Monday, and now, now we're gonna go back to full auto. Why not just go back to state of wake? Nah. No, you don't want to do that. Now, okay. now I'm I'm triggered by that whole you, "are you woke" thing. I I can't do that. Are you woke? Because so many people use that in ways that 
I'm not. I, I don't want to be represented with that. Nah, it's like it's the uh, lefties use "Are you woke?" and the uh, alt writers use "Are you woke?" and the whole red pill. And I, I don't want any of that. I don't. I don't want anything to do with that. So this 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 last story we're going to cover here. This is uh, this is uh. Well, I'm going to read a little part and then going to comment, or you're going to comment. Please, sure. please tell me it's about the CZ75. No, it's not. Yeah. That's you horribly disappointing. I, I I made sure that I covered the story that you wanted to cover. If okay, you wanted to cover the CZ75, you needed to tell me. We could have planned Go ahead. Go ahead. USA Today's Nicole Guadino, Guadiano has is she written hot? an article. What's that? Is she, is she hot? The name sounds really hot. No idea. No idea. Oh. Don't know what she looks like. Uh, but Don't but, you think it would be good to like find out and like put a picture of her up if she's totally hot irrelevant totally Dude, not even interested. Uh, don't even care uh uh reporting on the rise of red flag laws in multiple state legislatures and and this this what i'm what i'm covering here it's not just about the rise of these red flag laws it's about how she's covering these red flag law stories so she does this reporting in the same Agit prop disguised as straight news way, typical of gun grabbers that do the bidding of the progressive state masters. So she does this so well that one has to at least ask the question. And it's Is she question hot? That... No, that's not the that's question. The, that's not the question. <laughs> that's not the question. The question is uh, that that I don't uh, I don't presume to definitively answer here is. Is this a paid advertisement for anti-gun groups pushing for red flag laws? Now, re real briefly, red flag laws. These are laws where your your family member, a neighbor, a police officer can decide that they think that you're dangerous, either to yourself or others, and then they can get your guns confiscated from police. And there's uh, there's six states that have passed this uh, so far and more states are working on it in the way uh, you know following on you know they're they're basically using the dead in florida to try to get the the, the fear and the sympathy that they need to uh, uh more sufficiently domesticate the sheep to accept this insane process which is a, a i mean it's if you believe in the Bill of Rights and Rule of Law, good luck with that. But you know, it's it's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. It's a due process. So, so at one point, she's she's talking about uh, uh, after after she gives a sanitized version of 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 what these red flag laws are. She writes at one point that uh, uh, she. Uh, where is it here? She, she describes the laws as simply laws that allow family members or law enforcement to seek a court order to temporarily, that's a loaded word, restrict people's access to firearms, um, confiscate, when they show red flags, another loaded word, that they are a danger, another loaded word, to themselves or others. By the way, I'm wearing a shirt and I'm advertising this. I kept this this scene the whole time because I wanted to keep this up here. Agora.threadless.com. That shirt says, I'd rather face the danger of a madman with a gun than empower the state to define what a madman is. Well, apparently, Nicole would rather empower the state, although she doesn't. She writes it in, in the guise of a straight news article in which she uses quotes from every town for uh, against gun violence and uh, uh, and the Gifford group, both of which are basically billionaire funded anti-liberty, anti-human, anti-gun police state worshiping groups. So she quotes from them. She offers no counters whatsoever from the people who are concerned about these red flags laws. So as Ajit Prop goes, Nicole's piece is, it's, it's not as inflammatory as others, and that, that actually makes it more, more dangerous because it's so freaking subtle how she, she puts the Parkland shooting 
right next to this law. She keeps coupling those because she wants you to feel that that sympathy and that fear that'll that'll kind of let you gloss over the fact that we're talking about a fundamental violation of due process. I know you're chomping at the bit. Go ahead. I got nothing to say. Really? Yeah. You know why? Because I don't give a rat's ass about her and her stupid article and the stupid people that are following these stupid people. You know I'm going to say cover these things. Do you know I why know I you, point them out? Because it is important to point them out. I I, it, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help people now. Some of my audience, they're they already fully well know, but some of the people that run across this, they're going to see. Oh wow. Oh, maybe I should look out for that. Oh, so if I'm reading an article that's a straight news article, it's not necessarily a straight news article. Maybe I should read it with a little bit more of a critical eye and not allow myself to be. Uh, hypnotized into complacency. Yeah, I, I, I think you're doing the right thing. But well, thank for you me, for your approval, Dad. You're very welcome. But for me, it's where I spend my money. I don't care about these people anymore, and I'm not interested in arguing with them. Uh, if they're so ignorant of history and the Constitution, you're not going to change their mind. The sheeple will stay sheeple. All the sheeple need to know is when you come for my guns, I stop being a sheepdog and I start becoming a wolf. I'm not going to put up with it. That's that's all there is to it. I'm not going to leave a country for my children that is more subjugated than it already is. And I, I refuse to capitulate. When Dick Sports makes an announcement that they're going to sell even fewer firearms that are of one type or another. Hey, I've taken my business to their competition, plain and simple. Yeah, that's and it. <laughs> Goodbye. There's 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 nothing to talk about. And when they say that all of these organizations, pro gun organizations are messed up and they have to be they're they're murdering babies, I send them more contributions. Not only to that one, but I found several new ones that I can contribute to. This is how I personally respond. I cannot take on every nudnik, and I'm keeping my language very clean tonight. Right, Paul? Thank you. Thank you. I've been trying. Well, I actually, well, never mind. Go ahead. I'm not going to argue with these people anymore. It's not worth my time. I'm just going to spend my money in institutions that value what I value, and support institutions that value what I value. And that's it. And the other institutions need to know, excuse me while I scratch another itch. Nice. They need to know that there will be consequences for trying to enact laws that limit gun ownership, yeah, whether they're was- political or monetarily, monetary, please, Go on. I was talking to one of these uh, police state wet dream fantasizers, uh, cattle car guides in waiting, whatever you want to call them. And they're like, you know, because I was saying, I was calling them these types of things. And they're like, that isn't the way to try to persuade me. This isn't how you have a conversation with someone that says, I'm not having a conversation with you. I'm warning you. All I'm interested in doing here, bud. I'm just interested in warning you. I just want you to understand that the cost of coercion is high. It's much higher than you imagine. So before you pull that metaphorical trigger, yeah, be aware that it, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you personally, economically, and otherwise. It's, it's, it's well, going to cost you. As they say, I will not go gently into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. That's Dylan Thomas' poem. And the quote-unquote, and I use this term very loosely, the intellectuals on the left who have it, who have the ideas set in their heads that they're going to confiscate anything or they're going to push the ball this way or that way, to advance their Marxist agenda because they really are deep down inside Marxists. 
Well, well, it, it, just just look at those. If if you if you could stomach watching any of the speeches at that gun anti gun crap that uh, happened Saturday. You, you, this is a lot more than about guns. These were like little, little socialist, little Marxist speeches that these 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 kids were giving, and and the adults as well. They're demanding a lot more than guns. They're demanding the well, whole Marxist, well, uh, whatever you want to call on. it, agenda. And, and we should be demanding, Marxist, uh, whatever. And we should be demanding a lot more than guns because the Second Amendment does not say you have the right to keep and bear guns. It says you have the right to right. keep and bear arms. So I have. I want I my post- neighbor to have an attack helicopter. I do, because I, I trust my neighbor more than I, more than the sorry. government. Go ahead. I, I posted something on my my other Facebook page, and it's, it's gotten like I'm surprised, like forty or fifty shares and hundred and fifty like reactions, uh, and it was uh, gun grabber. That AR-15 will never stop an F-16. And uh, my my res- me me, fuck. <laughs> I guess I need an F sixteen. <laughs> uh, well, and that is what. That's the, it. That's the response, kids. Yo, yeah. thank you for pointing out that I'm inadequately armed to stop you. I demand my right, whatever that is. I demand my right to be armed, not not to have a little pea shooter. I demand my if I can if I can acquire whatever I need to acquire to have the arms to fairly meet you uh, at your your tyrannical challenges. I demand that you well, get out of my way and let and me for our neocon, tools of self defense. For our neocon friends who want to spend our tax dollars on a military budget, um, it, it's intentional that they're taking 30 to 40 to 50 percent of your wages out of your pocket so that they can fund the military and not to allow you to have the resources to to arm yourself that we've lost the right to arm ourselves and Reagan helped with that because he in the 80s he passed a law that forbids you to 86. from owning what's that 86. From owning full auto assault, real assault rifles. Well, years before you were, it was banned for you to have artillery and battleships and attack helicopters and F-16s. The government doesn't want you in the business of arming yourself, which is what free men do. Ever since the time of the Spartans and the Athenians, where free men had the latest and greatest in weapon systems in their homes. And didn't go out murdering their neighbors because they knew that the ramifications to their own families would be dire if they did that. Um, Those were free men. But today, our money goes to the government to to, to protect us. The good news is that a lot of people who do fly F-16s, and this is what I meant to say earlier, was was the quote-unquote and I use the term intellectuals from the left loosely, know that if they kick something off, they will be the first to be targeted. And if you have people flying F-16s attacking Americans, uh, armed American uh, militias and civilians, that there will be many F-16 pilots who will turn their planes around and start to target the other side. Um, that is, I hope, something that the left will take seriously and it seems to thus far and not push things too far too fast because if they do they will be the first to go down right i think that's a good place to end this and basically it's if you if you happen to be one of these uh gun grabbing uh police state wet dreamer uh cattle car guide in waiting yeah, it's not going to be, it's 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 not going to be, your your cost to coerce me and others like me isn't going to be that you go into a voting booth and pull a lever. No, it's going to cost you way more than that. It's going to cost you blood, sweat, and tears. At the end of the day, it's going to cost you blood, sweat, and tears. <clears throat> and on that note, everything else to say. I think we'll wrap this show up. Well, I think I think we're sounding a little radical here um wow 
I'm I'm not radical. I'm I'm just saying pfft, it's <laughs> there there there's no rolling over and playing dead from people who have recognized what a fundamental threat it is to allow any one entity to have the overwhelming balance of power in their favor. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to voluntarily sign up for that program. Because I know how that ends, and it probably ends with people like me in jail. Well, it always ends badly because it, when you look through history, whether it, any socialist collectivist movement always ends badly for the masses, always. And the always. elites, and the elites on either side of the, if you want to call it political divide, intellectual divide, uh, ide ideological divide. They always work out deals with one another and, okay, we'll, we'll just move out of the country and go over here. And they always seem to survive. Yeah. And, yet, and yet the people who are supposed to be helped by these movements are the ones who are hurt the most. So, yeah, I'm not signing up for that either. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not anxious at all to set anything off at all i'm not i'm my goal here is actually to to cut you off at the past now to help you realize that no 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 this is not the time we, we can't make this push now the cost is way too high and, and for so those my, people my, my tactic here is to attempt at least to to nip this in the bud and for those people who are at, at a level where they want to see something kick off, just remember that every single revolution, the, the, the end result, the people end up in a far worse place than what they were, what the revolution started to fight against. Almost and then they'll say every the time. Revolution, and I'll say, yeah, before the American Revolution, people had more freedom. They, they did. Less and they were taxed. Less, less taxes. Far less taxes. <laughs> we we won our out. freedom. We won our freedom by paying uh, George Washington like 10 times the taxes on whiskey, where before it was the rich and elite that were being taxed on tea, because the only people who could afford to buy tea were the rich and powerful. And then so when they get into power, what do they do? No more tea tax. Now we're going to tax your whiskey, which starts up yeah. Shays Rebellion. Is it Shays Rebellion? Shays, Shays Rebellion. Rebellion is one of them, yeah. yeah. So it, it, be and careful what you wish for. Pennsylvania is the big one. Yeah. Be, be careful Rebellion. what you wish for. Both of those were basically – Shays Rebellion – that's a whole story, but maybe we should do a show on that sometime. I think we on should. Shays Rebellion and the Whiskey Rebellion and how they are the last gasp of the true revolution and the counter-revolutionaries, they, they – they they snuffed out the revolution when they snuffed out those revolutions or those and wait, rebellions. And I, I need to add this. And who was the largest whiskey manufacturer um after the the war the, Georgia after Porch. the war? Yeah. Georgia Porch. The same guy who passed laws Georgia. to govern whiskey and the taxation of whiskey was the, the largest manufacturer had exemptions. Not yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he knew what the laws were going to be before the laws were implemented. Yeah, he cut himself a nice niche to get rich. Yeah, he sure did. That was Georgie Porgy. That was Georgie Porgy. So, at any rate, we will yeah. not be back next week. I am doing my hiatus, and when we emerge next week, we will be. Is Daily's full auto now? There is a chance. I'm not sure what how we're going to do full auto. I don't know yet. It might not be on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. It might be somewhere else. It might be on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. Uh, one thing is for sure, we'll be back. Where will we be back? That part I'm not so sure about. Uh, but And when uh, we do come back, I want to talk about CZ75. Maybe. maybe well, uh, yeah, if you want to talk about CZ75, we'll talk about CZ75. Uh, uh Tomorrow, I will be doing headlines you may have missed on my personal Facebook page at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And tomorrow night is his Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora. 
And uh, yeah. And tomorrow. Last is Daily Tuesday before it's renamed as well. And tomorrow I will be going to work early and busting my ass all day. And tomorrow Good. night I'm going to come and sit. Well, I'm going to come home, have dinner, and sit on my couch and veg out. That's, that's, watch the that's show. where I'll be. I will watch be, actually. Yes. Yeah. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you all Toodles. for joining us. Toodles, Pips, especially to, to the folks that took the time to comment. I really appreciate the comments a lot. It helps the show. It helps us add different cool stuff into the show. So I really appreciate the comments. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, have a great rest of your day.